Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs. I have had a question put to me by quite a few people, usually younger people, both on Twitter and here on YouTube, um, asking me what type of games did I play when I was a child? Uh, did I have video games? And I have to try and explain that when I was a child, there were no video games. They didn't exist. Uh, there was no digital technology to speak of. There were no smartphones or anything like that. It was a very, very different world. Um, so I thought it might be interesting um, to tell you a little bit about what we did as children, um, what our world looked like. And I'll try and focus on um, technology in particular, uh, but not exclusively, uh, to show what was the dominant technology at the time that influenced people's lives and especially children's lives. And I think you'll be quite surprised. Um, OK, let's start off. Um, I'll occasionally uh, pop a little um, black and white photo up in the top corner. Um, I've been going through um, my old um, photo book. You'll see a few photos of, of me, hopefully illustrating uh, what we got up to. The very first um, photo I'll show you is of me one year old. <laughs> so yes, that is a very long time ago. Um, and I was allowed to hold my dad's box brownie. I think that's what it was called. I'm, I'm not a camera expert, um, so uh, hopefully uh, most of you will know what that means. Um, but the very popular brownie a camera that came in the 1950s, uh, still in a box shape. And uh, I, I know my dad had it for many years and uh, he entrusted me with it for that photo, which I thought was really nice. But then my dad was an exceptional person. He he always had confidence in me and, and he always trusted me. So I think that was a great way to grow up for a girl. Um, so that demonstrates uh, one uh, type of technology which looks really old fashioned nowadays. Um, uh, we, we, obviously you had to have film rolls and it was mostly black and white uh, until well into the 1960s really. Um, they had to be then developed and it, it all took a long time. Uh, but it was fun and uh, that was the main technology for taking pictures. The next one I have to mention is the radio. The radio of course has been around a long time and we still have it, thank goodness, um, but in our day it was really exceptionally important. Um, before the days of television. Yes, there was a life before TV. Um, the, the main source of information and entertainment would come through the radio. And we still had quite um, old-fashioned bulky ones that sort of sat in one corner of the lounge and everybody would congregate around it. And, and you can see a picture of of me with uh, my aunt and grandmother there and you can it's quite fuzzy but you can see the radio in the background. Uh, one of the main technologies that was hugely important for communication was of course the telephone. Um, we have it today but in a very different shape and form to um, what we had when I was a child. Um, I, unfortunately, I couldn't find a photo of a, a proper old 1950s black Bakelite telephone where you had to, you know, laboriously dial one number after another um, until your call connected. 
Um, they were really heavy, those old phones. I only have a photo of me as a, as a really little girl, as a toddler. Um, obviously, I'm um, playing very excitedly with a, with a toy phone I'd been given uh, for Christmas. Um, yeah, so we thought the phone was incredibly exciting. Most families had one landline. If you were lucky, you were the sole occupier of that landline until well into the 1960s, a lot of people were on party lines. Um, and I remember that because uh, we had our own and were often envied for that. The phone was precious and uh, while it changed shape and colour over the years. Black was eventually replaced by beige. Oh, very cool. <laughs> uh, and they became lighter and more plasticky, but um, they stayed like this um, for a very long time until we got the ones where you could just press buttons on it. And we thought, well, that was, that was the height of modernity, really. Phone uh, ruled people's lives really tremendously important the old-fashioned landline phone so what did we um get up to when we weren't um on the phone or listening to the radio or at school well i was very lucky as a child i think i think i had a great childhood um because in germany uh, as a primary school kid you were let out of school by about midday really um, it wasn't till later that maybe you had to stay till 1 or 2 p.m but that was that was it so uh, we were home early for lunch and after that all the mothers would chuck their kids out you know out with you they didn't want them at home they had stuff to do um, all the kids just congregated outside and we spent most of our days outdoors. There were no adults to supervise us. Nobody told us what to do. We were just roaming gangs of children, getting up to no good, basically. Hours and hours. Um, for half the year, while... The daylight was there, you know, until quite late. And then we'd go home for uh, our evening meal. And after that, sometimes we, we went out again. It, it was tremendous. Uh, we, we sort of formed uh, gangs. We, we learned a lot about social interaction. Um, and sometimes these gangs would fight with each other. Um, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun. And we roamed quite far. We explored the neighbourhood and further afield. Uh, of course, in those days, there was very little traffic because cars were expensive. And after the war, uh, it took a long time until people could afford something like a car. So we were pretty safe, you know. we just occupy the roads, the pavement, the parks, anywhere, you know. we we just do our stuff, basically getting up to pranks and, you know, um, all sorts of mischief. Of course, uh, during the winter time, because uh, we had long winters in northern Germany, we, had to spend a lot of lot more time indoors um so that's when i come to the next important technology and that was the tv the tv was very very new i remember i must have been around five or six years old when my parents got a TV. So I reckon it would have been around 1959. A lot of people didn't get a TV until much later. Uh, for some reason, my parents were early adopters. So there we were with this incredible box. And suddenly 
the world literally opened up. Now, you have to understand that um, in the 1950s and early 60s, there wasn't a lot of programming yet for TV on in Germany. Um, it, it took a long time until there was enough being shown during the daytime and the evening to satisfy demand. When I was a little kid, there was... I, I remember days where I think there was... There was always the news at eight o'clock. Um, that's a religious institution in Germany. But I don't think there was a full program every night. I don't recall that. And programming for children was um, still in its infancy. So there was one half hour program, I recall, for children uh, that ran at the weekend. And I can't describe the excitement waiting for that one programme every Saturday or Sunday, whenever it was. I mean, I could hardly sleep the night before. They struggled, you know, putting together programmes for kids. They were used to doing it on the radio, and there was quite a lot there for children. Uh, but on the TV, it took a while. So... They obviously bought in programmes from overseas TV shows and that is how I had my first exposure to things we, we as little children were allowed to see. And I recall that one of the biggest and most popular programmes, and not just for children, was Lassie, the American TV show Lassie, Lassie. That that was that was huge. You have no idea how that influenced us. It 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 practically imprinted an idea of American culture into my brain, um, and I had some very weird notions for many years how all Americans lived, uh, all based on the Lassie TV show. A similar type of TV program was Fury. Fury was a big favourite with me. It was just amazing. I adored it and I still have the book. There is Fury. I don't know how many times I read that book but um, it, it got obviously translated into German and it was very popular. So I think it was published in, uh, yes, 1959, it says. So that makes sense. That sort of coincides with the these TV shows um, coming to Germany. Um, so that was my first experience with TV. And while my parents were quite sort of open-minded uh, about these things, a lot of people weren't. This was the new media that would corrupt the youth of Germany and would all end up brainwashed and brain dead and no good could come of it. Yeah, I, I didn't have to suffer like many other children who were not allowed to watch TV. Uh, of course, there were a lot of educational pundits as well who proclaimed um, that, that watching TV would um, negatively affect their education and, and their brain development and, you know, parents shouldn't really allow it. Oh, dear me, yes. Does this sound familiar? Every generation has something like this where the older generation doesn't quite know how to cope with the with the new technology or whatever and um, declares it to be um, uh, something that, that's going to have a detrimental effect. All I can say is I was really, really lucky that my mum in particular absolutely adored the TV and we had it on every night. So my generation was the first one in Germany that grew up from a very early age with television 
and I think it had a really lasting influence on us because not only did it open up the world to us, but uh, we also we began to see things in a in a way that was different to the older traditional storytelling. There were newer, more modern ways of telling stories with pictures and sound, and it it was. It was simply amazing. Um, uh, I, I mentioned those t uh, two uh, American TV programs. There was another one called, I think, Believe the Kid. It was a Western. Uh, and it was one of those quickly mass-produced um, series in the United States. It, features, it featured an actor who was apparently popular at the time, called the, his um, stage name or his TV name was Fuzzy Jones. And I remember being completely obsessed with this character. And I was so hyper excited after I'd watched one episode that I couldn't get to sleep. And my poor dad had to sit there spinning more stories about Fuzzy Jones until I finally nodded off. Uh, fortunately, my dad was a good storyteller. It's really quite funny looking back to that. I, I don't think many people will remember um, those Billy the Kid and the Lone Rider uh, TV Western series or Fuzzy Jones, but he lives on in my memory. That's all I can say. Of course, TV in Germany um, by uh, public statute had to have a very broad educational purpose. Um, so the early TV was modelled on the BBC, certainly in northern Germany, um, and we had a lot of what would be called culture. Uh, so it's something you don't see very often often anymore nowadays on TV, uh, but we were inundated with um, arts programs, you know, stage plays were regular, um, opera, um, programs about other arts like sculpture and painting, um, uh, history was covered, um, all sorts. We absorbed a lot that way, and I, I think that was a very good influence. Uh, it gave me a broad basis, which was strengthened by the reading we did. We were all big readers. I, I can't remember any of the kids I knew not reading voraciously. It was just we would scour the libraries it was incredible. We, we were like locusts, you know, snatching the books. And we just read an enormous amount, especially during the long winter evenings.